Hi, my name is Dustin. And I'm Sharon, and this is Bella. And this is our van, Benzie the Sprinter. You know, we did a lot of research into different Sprinter vans. Uh, there's a lot of different ones out there today. And we test drove Ford and Dodge, and ultimately, after test driving the Mercedes, knew we wanted to do that. We couldn't afford a new one. So we were looking for used, which was way harder to find than we thought it would be. People drive these things until four or 500,000 uh -huh. miles. So finding one that had a good life left to her, but wasn't brand new off the dock was a challenge. But she actually came from uh, Northern Wisconsin, an electrician, I believe it was. An electrician had her and um, was trading her in. So we saw it, test drove her, loved her, and yeah, drove up the next day to, to buy her. I think the longevity, and uh, obviously a lot of other people have used Sprinter vans in the past, but just the longevity of, of being able to get a lot of life out of the, the motor. We are in Seward, Alaska. We did the amazing trip on the Alaskan Highway. We drove from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, all the way up here to Alaska. Took us just over a week. It was amazing. Stopped at some hot springs, have been doing hiking, any waterfall hike we can find along the way. And it's been raining off and on ever since we've been here. We don't mind. <laughs> So it's really important to us to keep the, the front of the van as stealth as possible. So looking in, it looked like just an ordinary van. So we didn't really do anything to the, the very front of it or the, the driver's seat or passenger seat. Um, we do have a Reflectix shield that we put down in the, the front of it for when we're parked. Went to Goodwill, found a curtain, cut it up, and I cut some reflectix to size, just lined the inside of it. So this will pop right in the window. Um, it's nice, it stays put, and then it keeps, the reflectix actually does a really good job keeping it insulated more in the front. Obviously then people can't see in, so it's temperature controlled. And then when we're not using it, I just shove it back in the little bag in the corner. So we can pop it up each night, um, put it back. Definitely does help with the big window. Um, and the temperature control and it's not too obtrusive or in the way. I cut the Reflectix and then just on the sewing machine sewed it around the edges. Uh, again it was a curtain I think from Target or something but at Goodwill and then my leftover fabric I just made a little bag for it so like a $2.99 investment <laughs> with the Reflectix but it's worked out pretty well. We just cut a hole for the mirror so it's super easy to just pop in and then these actually hold it in to place really nicely. We are just under, just over a week on our journey from Wisconsin, uh, we have boondocked camped every night thus far, which has been amazing. Places we did stay in a Walmart a couple nights, um, two nights, but two different Walmarts. Two different Walmarts, yep. But the rest has just been boondock camping, especially here in Alaska, the best places just off the yeah. side of the road that you could stay. Some of the best camping sites I've seen are like right off the, the major paved road. Kind roads. of spoiling us yeah. for life, I think, because <laughs> it's not going to be like this in the lower 48, but. Uh, beautiful spot. So yeah, before we go to bed at night, we just pop that in. It does help with privacy as well. We do have curtains, um, so we'll draw these at night as well on each side and pull them shut. So the combination of the two, this keeps it a little more private. On each side we can pull it, but as we're trying to get in and out in the back, then we just tie them off. So the top cord is ran. Uh, I have two bolts before I did the, the wood paneling um, back there. So it's attached and it's just uh, tied off on either side so we can pull it tight. So far we've been really impressed with the, the, the Mercedes uh, V6 Turbo. It has a lot of power, gets about 20 miles to the gallon, so we're super excited with that and yeah. has tons of power. I mean, or we're able to, to pass semis and, and keep going uphill and never felt like it bogged down. It's been performed really well. We both well. had small Subarus and it drives just like our Subarus did even though we're in a large Mercedes van. <laughs> so For far sure. we've been really happy with the Mercedes. Um, again, it you can tell like it's, it drives really nice. It's got a lot of life in her and she picks up well. She's handled really well on the roads. A lot of the hills switchbacks and inclement weather. Um, she's driven really amazing. Apparently we can hook up a backup camera. I guess the person that had the van before us had one in there but took it with him when he uh, traded it in. So it has the functions for it. We just need to purchase a camera. It is a different drive. I, I'm sure that's just sprinters in general, not having mirrors or sights. You're depending all on just the sides. Um, so I could see maybe the benefits of it one day, but it wasn't on the essential list for our first build of things we wanted done. <laughs> no. 
It was a little difficult at first to, to get used to driving and, and looking, relying just on the mirrors. Mm -hmm. But I find that with the, the blind spot, the lower mirror that they have, it's you can actually see pretty well. And it's just getting that adjustment of, of looking over the shoulder does no good. Yeah. So just <laughs> relying and trusting on, on the mirrors and, and knowing that we're in a large van. So usually people can see us if we're if we're trying to move over or anything. It gives me a whole new respect though for semi-drivers and larger vehicles on the road. I think in my little Subaru, I would kind of whip around people thinking, speed up, and I've only respect that. It's not that simple. <laughs> so when we bought this, it was a just a bare cargo van. Mm -hmm. uh, there was nothing to the, the interior. So we started with lining everything with the Reflectix. Then we went with uh, fiberglass insulation and then another layer of Reflectix. Uh, on the walls, we have Reflectix, the fiberglass insulation, and then a layer of plywood that we attach the wood paneling to. Um, and in the ceiling, we used uh, little strips along the ribbing in order to then attach the panels to, to the, the actual ribs of the van. We used uh, half inch plywood strips along the ribs in order to attach the wood paneling to. Cutting the, the hole was the, the big point of no return for us when, when we got this. We, we cut the hole ourselves for the fan and uh, it's nerve wracking spending all of your money on a large vehicle and then taking a giant saw to it and cutting a hole in the roof. Um, we definitely had some neighbors coming at the time saying, why are you doing that? But um, after the first cut, it, it wasn't as scary anymore. <laughs> so when we installed the, the fan, we first uh, drilled our pilot holes and then cut the actual hole for the fan. Uh, we used this uh, putty type tape to put down to initially seal it and then after we installed it with the bolts through, uh, then we used some marine grade caulk to, to seal it off. We did a lot of research on the different fans out there and I can't remember the name of, there's kind of two that a lot of people end up going with. Uh, we decided on the Max Air because you can have it open in the rain and it's not gonna get wet. So that was kind of our biggest desire to the Max Air fan. It's nice, it works on a remote control and we can turn it on and off. Wiring was pretty, pretty simple. Uh, it just had the one cord that came out. So we decided to run it through the ceiling and down and around and it uh, connects to our goal zero, which we can talk about as well. So the fan's great for uh, not only bringing fresh air in, it has a exhaust or we can pull air into the, the vehicle, but uh, we use it a lot when we're cooking in order to uh, not only remove the condensation from inside and the moisture, but to, to remove the, the fumes and the, the cooking smells as well. And for the dog, being able to leave her in here and know that it'll be a safe temperature for her. As Dustin said, you can pull the air in or out, but you can set a temperature with the remote control. It's pretty nice. We set it where we want it to be to make sure it'll stay, you know, approximately that cool. Obviously, uh, we'll need alternate things when we get into hotter climates, but right now it hasn't been warmer than 70 degrees. So uh, when she's in here, we make sure we have fresh air running for her. As far as cooking goes, um, we have our cooktop space here. Um, so our counter top where we can set up our stove. We actually have our stove in a compartment here, right under the bed. So we can just pull it out and set it up right here uh, when we're ready to cook meals. And it's just a simple propane stove, um, but it's worked really nicely. We just have the fan on and ventilating really good. Um, and it gives us our space to cook right up here. I love the challenge of it. Uh, <laughs> we were big campers before, so tent camping, backpacking, uh, you have to get creative with meals and things that you can make simply one pot style. So I was really excited for the challenge. And um, I mean, again, it's, it's only good. <laughs> yes, yeah, it hasn't been that long, but we've been doing good. We stocked up uh, and you know, trying to think through simple, but still nutritious food that we can make. So we have, uh a six gallon freshwater tank over here that is hooked up to our hand pump sink that then comes down into here for our gray water, which we've actually used a uh, plastic kitty litter jug for the, uh, the gray water tank. It's about a two gallon tank. We did some experimenting trying to find the right size. At first we thought we were gonna use six gallon for both and it kind of hit us that, you know, gray water is something that we can dump. We're not really putting anything 
you know, in there that would not be easily dumpable at a lot of places. So um, we decided to go with a smaller tank in there for ease with that. So kitty litter did the job. <laughs> We've more adjusted. Um, I mean, we've been so far in places where, you know, it's whenever we stop, whenever we filled up gas, we've just been thinking, oh yeah, let's take out the trash and let's dump the water. So um, we thus far haven't had any challenges with it, though we could see maybe needing to change that at some point. Be getting something larger. Um, I was really concerned about smell. So, um, you know, the smaller it is, the less you'll let it get full and the more you'll think to take it out. So. Same with the gray water. Uh, we just kind of thought that that would put pressure to keep smell down. This is our refrigerator, the ever important Dometic. Um, we have been super happy with it. So refrigerator cooler runs off of our solar and we've been really pleased with all that it's able to hold. Um, we set the temperature so we can make it cooler if we want things that are iced or frozen. Uh, but it pulls such a small amount of our solar power and it's been really great thus far. So it's just on a drawer that slides out or slides in and we just have the latch for obviously moving transport. Uh, we had to do a lot of thinking through with the van as far as just making sure things would hold up to driving. So here we have uh, two storage containers. Uh, we, we mainly keep our, our different food and snacks in, in these two. Uh, the entire cabinet system is all hand built and, and custom made. Uh, I used three quarter inch birch ply and ripped down the pieces and, and I made all the doors. We used the same uh, paneling on the roof and ceiling. I kind of wanted to tie it in. So we made shaker style cabinets from scratch. I did not know much about power tools and how to use them and I've learned to use quite a few after um, working on the van. I think that's one of my favorite parts about her is that I mean every inch of it we built from scratch. Obviously it was a, a cargo box before and Dustin had a, a bit more technical or building knowledge than I did, but uh, it's kind of cool looking around. I mean, every imperfection is, is awesome because we made it and it makes me love it even more. Everything takes so much more time than we thought it would. Uh, we would say, oh, you know, this weekend we're gonna get the kitchen built. And it was two weeks later and we were half done with it. And actually rebuilt it twice because the first one didn't fit or the second one wasn't square. I think that was a huge learning curve we had is nothing in this van is square. So Dustin really struggled with that with so many, I mean, you would have square well, edges all around. It's everything and, you try and build is square and when the box you're trying to put it in is in a box giant at all. Circle. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, a, it was a process with that. I think it was challenging trying to figure out what the space would look like, what the the first kitchen I think you built was about this tall. Um, and then we looked at it and we said, hold on, why is it so short? We need it taller. Um, you know, I think just trying to, I kept joking, there's no Lego instructions of how to build a van. I wish there were, where it was build this and then build this. There's certainly people that have done it and done a great job, um, but it's kind of piecing together what we could find out there and come up with what we knew we needed as well. So. I think the hardest parts were in just kind of designing the size and the space and paired with the function. You know, we knew we needed to have space for the sink to fall in. We wanted it more undermounted um, for gray water, for fresh water. And then when it came to the refrigerator, uh, obviously for ease, the Dometic opens from the top. So having a way for it to slide out and easily access it, we, we came up with the idea of the drawer pulls. Oh, that taking up such a large part of our space here, trying to figure out then what can we still do with the space that we have to make it the most usable. So I would say we spent just as much time talking through the build as we did actually building at some points in time. Yeah. Um, just making sure that, you know, we were being the most efficient with the small space that we have in here. We decided to use a, uh, a laminate wood looking floor um, just for the, the durability and to be able to sweep stuff out and, and not have to, to worry about it. This is probably a, a naughty story to admit, but when we went to pick out flooring, we went to the local hardware store and we walked around all of the samples that were out and I just had my car keys in the hand and I just like walked up to each one and just started like scratching on them because I knew we needed something durable. I mean, it's a van, we have things sliding, we have our dog sliding around on here and we didn't want something where if you looked at it, it was just gonna scratch. So uh, we made sure we found the most durable laminate floor that there was in the 
hardware store and installed it to the back. We did put a layer of adhesive down. When we got the van, there was already like a plywood subfloor down um, from the previous person. So we just built off of the, the subfloor that was there. But we did adhesive and then just kind of tongue and groove, it snapped into place. We don't have it running all the way through the back, more just in the front to also make it homey, easy to sweep up and clean up. We've been pretty impressed with the insulation and how it's been keeping the temperature. Um, one of the other nights we woke up and I think it was 22 degrees outside um, and it was 56 degrees in the van. We did not have a heater running at all. So that was just our body heat and, you know, Della keeping the van warm and toasty, but we were super comfortable. We would love to in time install like a diesel heater. Um, we just didn't have it in the budget right away. Uh, what we did get as a backup is a little Mr. Buddy or Mr. Buddy uh, propane heater. Um, we ended up busting that out one, mo one morning um, just to, you know, heat this area up as we were making coffee in the morning and whatnot. But we just have that for more emergencies. But thus far, we really haven't um, had a need to. We have layers and jackets and a warm blanket. We've been really impressed with uh, the insulation. It's definitely it keeps the temperature in here pretty well. So in the, the summer and the warmer months, we, were, we found that if it was cooler in here or it, it or kept the cool, um, and yeah, it's kept pretty warm in here through through the last few days here in the here in Alaska. And uh -huh. insulation was tough too. That was another thing we researched a lot about. Um, you know, there's lots of options out there. We actually ended up calling a, a company in Colorado that builds RVs and sprinters and um, just asked them for their opinion and said, you guys have been building these, what do you recommend? And their advice was stay away from spray foam and stick with the classic insulation. So we, we followed their advice and thus far we've been super happy with it. It was a pain to install, probably a, a couple day process, but it's been great. It was really important to us to uh, keep this kind of structure free here. So this is, is open. We like to take our stand up paddle boards with us. So to be able to to have them lay through here was uh, was really important. Um, in this area here, we have, like we said, the, the stove up top. Speaking of cold Alaska, we have a, a nice wool blanket there for also emergency we can throw on or grab if need be. Um, and then we wanted this to be easier accessible as well. That's our goal zero. Uh, we did the Yeti 1250 and we wanted to be able to easily take a peek at it, see where it's at, what it's pulling in and we figured burlap was lightweight. We recycled it. It was a coffee shop getting rid of a bunch of burlap bags. So uh, we were able to get the recycled materials and it was a lot of research that went into whether or not to get the goal zero. And we know that it is a super debated topic. Uh, after reading different blogs and forums, I feel like you either have people immediately saying it is a total waste of money, don't do it. And you have people saying, I absolutely love my setup and I'm so happy I went with it. Ultimately, we decided we are not experts on this and we wanted something easier to kind of plug and play where if something went wrong, we had an 800 number we could call or if something stopped working, we could have a new one shipped out to us. And we were excited about the warranty, five year warranty on it if something went wrong. I was I watching even that. different, <laughs> well, there was like different guys, like there's this one guy who was all on YouTube about different things and he like broke his in a YouTube video and then his next video was like, Goal Zero just sent me a new one for free because I, he broke it like running a table saw and stuff. So I just, I thought that that was cool that at least if we totally broke something, we would be at a loss for at least this, we had a resource. And we've already reached out to them a few times just about different cords and things we needed. And they've been super helpful with the customer service, so. Yeah, so we we charge our Goal Zero off of a 230 watt panel on the roof. Um, so far, it has uh, kept our needs and we've we've been able to, to keep it nearly fully charged. Um, we've barely dented the the power storage of it. We did buy the cords to attach an extra additional aux battery to it, and we haven't done that yet. We haven't purchased a battery yet, um, and we have never taken it below 80% thus far, which has been nice. Um, I mean, it's been running our refrigerator, our, our lighting, charging our phones, cameras, things like that. And the fan, it powers as well and barely dropped down at all. The panels have been keeping it high. <laughs> um, so we'll, we'll charge our laptops off of it. We haven't been uh, currently using a, a ton of computer power just because we've been trying to be as off the grid as possible on this trip, but uh, it has definitely charged our, our laptops as well. Um, 
we're still trying to figure out what our long-term plans are. At the moment, we are saving up money to then have moments of play. I do have a job where I work remotely. Um, I'm a recruiter, so I don't have an office. I'm able to work from anywhere. Haven't thus yet put that into play, but that is an option. Dustin's job is a little more tying him to a desk. So uh, trying to figure out what that looks like longer term. At this moment in time, we are playing when we can. <laughs> we built the bed at this height so we would be able to uh, fit our bikes underneath it. So it was important to be able to get the bikes in and out. So we built the, the bed at that height. Below there, we have our garage and various storage. Up top here, we have our different uh, closet and uh, kind of kitchen storage. It's been nice having the bed higher up. My big, big thing that I was uh, making sure we wanted to keep was being able to sit on the bed and not have your head touch. I figured there would be times where it's rainy or gross that we're gonna just be hanging out up here eating dinner. So it was really important to me that we could still sit on the bed and not have our heads touch. But obviously we wanted to keep as much of the garage space as possible, especially with the bikes in there, um, storage for all of our gear. So it was a balance. I think we hit at just the perfect amount here. Uh, the bed is a little high to get in and out of. Um, so instead of just jumping and doing a leap we do have a stool that I keep just behind the burlap but then we can just stand on that and easily get into the bed which has been helpful and then for the the bed design of it you know we we wanted to make sure that we could lay without having to bunch up Dustin's just under six foot tall so that was important to him was to be able to lay um, where side to side it would have been too tight for him to be able to make it so that's why we decided to have the bed going the long way versus horizontally and then Closet space is important. I um, I mean, my closets were exploding at home, so I knew it was super important to have as much closet and storage space as possible. So we actually have drawers down below that open this way, and then we have the cabinets up above that open this way. So the first one is still kitchen storage. Um, below is all of our toiletries, bathroom storage. And then we get into Dustin's closet, my closet, and then in the back is all of our jackets and uh, rain jackets and gear like that. So we've been able to fit uh, our, our mountain bikes or our road bikes underneath by just removing the, the front tire. Um, and then my, my bike, I have to take the seat out as well, but then they're able to, to slide underneath and there's enough clearance to, to get them in and out. We debated heavily on, Dustin ended up winning that debate about the paddle boards. Um, we initially had planned to, you know, who knows in time we still may look into it, but a lot of people have racks built on the outside of the van. Pros and cons is it definitely takes away from the stealthness of it. I mean, we love that. People don't necessarily know this is a camper when we're parked. It's just a utility vehicle where once you start putting big racks on the top, uh, it becomes a little bit more obvious that we might be there to play and hang out a little bit longer. So all this summer when everyone went paddle boarding, it was so nice because we just slid the paddle boards in the van and they do take up a fair amount of space, but they just lean right up against here and we bungee them right to here for travel and they've been easy then to just open the doors and slide out the back so Dustin was pretty firm and wanting to make sure that we didn't fill this space in but we just had this kind of lightweight door that we can move open to slide the paddle boards in they go right up against the bikes and then we're good for a, a, a fun adventure <laughs> we do not have inflatables um, so we actually ended up we've had our paddle boards for gosh maybe six five or six yeah. years now before I think the inflatable technology was really out there and We've debated selling ours and getting inflatables, but we actually love the ones we have. So in this moment in time, they, they will work in the van as is, though they take up quite a bit of space. Actually, not too bad when they're just bungeed up against this. So, And then we figured when we're going paddle boarding, we could just keep them outside the van if we're, you know, staying somewhere that for a, a couple days where they don't necessarily need to be loaded in and out so we can still access the space. We didn't bring them with for Alaska. We figured this temperature and weather was not paddle boarding season anymore. This was more hiking and biking time. <laughs> so we use uh, these rope light uh, that is powered from the Goal Zero. They're LED rope lights that we just ran along the, the perimeter. And it's a combination of double stick tape and nails that are holding it up, but we've been really impressed. They're super energy efficient. Goal Zero doesn't even register that they're on or pulling any 
any power from it, which has been nice. And they're actually on a, a little dimmer switch, so we can set the mood lighting if we want. But we've been able to, you know, dim it late night or in the morning when Dustin's making coffee and I'm still sleeping. He uses a little less light. Or when we want to be hanging out in here, we have them up on high. And then these are just little LED pop lights. What's nice is that they're also on a remote, which has been helpful. We can just take this remote with us to bed, but they have on, off, or low or high, and they also have a timer switch. So we've been able to set it and then they'll turn off on their own after 30 minutes. So if we wanna to go to bed, we can even just leave those on for a little bit and then they'll shut off on their own or take the remote with us and then just pop them off when we're done. And these ones, these lights here are uh, actually chargeable by uh, USB. So they'll just slide right off, they can twist off and then you can charge them. We went that route just because we didn't know for sure how much they were gonna pull from the goal zero and we were not as confident on wiring lighting all the way to the goal zero especially in our time span at some point we might reconsider uh, doing more wiring but at this moment we figured that this was the easier immediate solution so they're just little battery powered touch lights um yeah so the rear of our van we we call our garage and that's going to contain all of our our garage type materials our biking mm -hmm. hiking camping supplies <laughs> let's go take a look okay so now we're to the the back of the van so we'll take a look at our garage uh, we wanted to be able to keep the doors open and not have everybody see all of our stuff down below so we uh, use the the coffee bags again to to protect the the visual of that so underneath here on the left here we have our bikes and then we're able to, as we said before, take the paddle boards all the way through the front uh, and load them in from, from this area. But then we have extra water back here, an extra water jug, and then a couple of bins of, of miscellaneous storage with some, some tools and, and different uh, stuff like that, our, our bike helmets and bike tools and pumps and, and that sort of thing. We have three total six gallon jugs, so 18 gallons total. Um, that we can have. We have the others ready to go and to counterweight the van, uh, we wanted to try to make sure we weren't, put, weren't putting too much weight all on that side. So uh, we keep the other jugs back here, as well as the Goal Zero on this side uh, for a bit more weight. Currently, we don't have any bathroom facilities in our van. We've thought about possibly doing a composting toilet in the future, but for the most part, we usually use uh, campground or public restrooms. Yeah, we really haven't been anywhere where there hasn't been a place that we could use. Showers have been another story. We've been using hot springs thus far <laughs> and enjoying swimming in those. Uh, that won't always be the case. Some campgrounds do have different showers that you can use. At this point, we've just kind of been riding it wherever we've been able to find some and uh, dry shampoo and baby powder. <laughs> right now, the best way to, to get a hold of us is on our Instagram at uh, Benzie the Sprinter. We hope to have a, a blog linked on there as well. And uh, the blog yeah. link will be below. That's going to be up and coming soon, content coming. But at Benzie the Sprinter on Instagram is the best way to see our travels and, and pictures of this beautiful girl in action.